Hello, our invite. How are you? My name is Dr. William Kyle Vincent. I appreciate you all inviting me to speak on strategic planning and thinking that goes into a lot of different professions and decision making and everything else. Um, you know, my profession as a primary care physician, being trained in residency, it involved a lot of that. And with that, um, I just like to share some of the things that that, that I encounter. Um, you know. In the hospital versus outside of the hospital, two very different settings. So your setting is key as far as your strategy is concerned because it has a lot to do with the different puzzle pieces that you have to move in place um, to have uh, barriers and different checkpoints. In the hospital, you worry about overall public safety. So there's security guards there. You wanna make sure that they're up at the front. You wanna make sure that they bypass and are always in communication with um, ambulances and 911 calls that are in and everything else because you need that information as a physician to best help the patient. But at the same time, you wanna make sure the safety and security of all the patients as well as the visitors are um, a, a top priority. Um, once you get in the hospital and everything, there's a <clears throat> large amount of protocol as far as uh, safety. You know, Personal protective equipment is very big right now as far as a hot topic, and that's very prevalent in the hospital. You want to make sure that they're, that you're hand sanitizing your hands and you're wearing gloves where it's necessary. Um, OSHA and a lot of uh, the, the protocols that we have to go through when patients get a certain medical condition that can be very contagious, we as physicians have to gown up and glove up to make sure not only just to protect ourselves, but really to protect the patient as well because their immune systems are down. Their immune systems aren't operating at full strength. And because of that, anything that I may be carrying, albeit asymptomatic, I would not want to then give the patient. So it's very important that different labels get put in place um, as far as making sure that you're keeping the infections down, that you're able to do your job in the hospital and, and really, um, the strategy behind all of that is once again optimizing patient care and um, being able to execute that. Um, surgically, um, there's a whole different set of protocols, you know, whether it's the scrubs, the timeouts, all of these different things uh, go into place, in which case the strategic and planning goes in that you identify the patient, you identify the surgery, you identify which limb or, or area of the body that you're working on, you identify everybody in the room that's going to be a part of that procedure, that operation, because everybody needs to be accounted for. You start the time, you estimate the amount of blood loss, you use the number of amount of uh, uh, sponges or, 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 or gauzes that are used. Um, you use the, do the same thing with the instruments. All of these things are put in place so nothing gets lost or missed because uh, there, are, there have been some very unfortunate circumstances where things might have gotten left in patients, uh, which causes issues down the road. Um, you want to make sure from uh, the staple count to, like I said, the amount of people in the room, you want to make sure everything is accounted for and that everybody's on the same page as far as the procedures that are uh, performing. Um, transitioning to more of an outpatient setting, which is where I spend most of my time, is the fact that um, you know you have, we have protocols in place there, gloves, personal protective equipment, making sure that uh, hand washing and hand sanitizer is very placed very strategically um, so everyone can wash their hands very frequently if you do happen to come into contact with a sick patient or, or uh, something that's in a toxic bag that you're throwing away. We want to make sure that you're able to uh, wash your hands um, very efficiently and not have to travel too far a distance to be able to do so. Um, planning that is, is, is once again one of those things that, that's behind the scenes as far as making sure that those things are available, making sure those counts are always up, um, paper towels, hand sanitizer, soaps, all those types. Um, procedurally, um, we sterilize everything, so everything uh, from scissors to sutures to suture removal kits, abscess drainage kits, all of those um, speculums, all of those different instruments, make sure that they're being used, but then more importantly that they're being disposed of and put in a proper place to where they're getting cleaned correctly. So these are just some of the things that go into my strategy and, and, and uh, strategic thinking and planning. And it's ever evolving because with different um, diseases or different positions, uh, opportunities that come up um, that might not have been aware of simply because it hadn't, uh, the, the, the scenario hasn't played itself out yet, um, you, you know on the fly. But at the end of the day, we always wanna have our priorities in line which is patient care, you know, physician and nurses and medical assistant safety, 
and um, the ability to make sure that if a situation does arise, it's consolidated and it's as isolated as possible so it doesn't affect others. So that's uh, a very kind of long-winded brief scenario of, of the strategic planning and thinking that has gone into my profession. Um, but there's a large meeting, whole departments about it, and you really have to then execute all of the employees, staff members, people that are working there.